Okay, what's going on everyone? Uh, so in this video, I'm gonna be responding to Bro Jeff's latest video over here, uh, where he goes for a trip to the grocery store and then lays out his top three principles or rules for bodybuilding nutrition. Um, now, before we get into that, I wanna give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now, in case any of you guys aren't aware, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that I use to run jeffnipper.com, where I sell all my training programs. And I've been using them for about four years now, and I think their service is amazing. Uh, the website templates that they use are really a aesthetic and simple to set up. Um, and they also have amazing 24 hour customer support that I'll use anytime I run into any issues. Um, also over the last few months, I've been using the Squarespace analytics app to track my web traffic, what pages are getting more views and which programs are selling better than others. Um, so if you guys are looking to get started with your own website or creating your own online store, then I strongly recommend using Squarespace. And if you go to squarespace.com, you can get started with a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash slash nippered, and that's going to save you 10% off your first purchase. All right, so basically I'm going to go through the Bro Jeff Grocery Haul one principle at a time. I'll have the tam uh, I'll have the timestamps linked down below if you guys would like to hop around according to topic. First things first, I will say that the response to these <laughs> videos has been super interesting to me as a creator uh, because it seems like these parody videos will get almost double the engagement and uh, interaction as I get on an actual informative video. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what to make of that. It's something I could do maybe every couple months, maybe like the first of every other month, do a parody video like this? Or is it something you think I should reserve for maybe doing like once a year, uh, say on April Fools? Just let me know. I'm not sure how much to use this character on my channel uh, without potentially getting some backlash, uh, but it's been entertaining for me to say the least. Um, so anyway, I wanna jump right in and go through uh, all three of these rules one at a time, um, figure out if he got anything right and what that might be and kind of dismantle anything he got wrong. Uh, so let's have a look at his first rule here. Pillar number one, which is that the more protein you can eat, the better. There is actually no limit to the amount of protein that you can absorb in a single meal. And you can actually use all the protein that you eat for muscle building purposes. Um, so the first rule, basically, the more protein you eat, the better. Uh, pretty strongly disagree with that. Uh, what I would say is that most people in the general public do actually under eat on protein and could benefit from a higher protein intake. And that's probably at least in part due to the fact that I think the RDA or recommended daily allowance for protein is set way too low, at least for people who are weight training. Um, it's currently at 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Um, so that's about 0 0.4 grams per pound, which is extremely low. Um, so just for example, say a 120 pound woman would be eating just about 50 grams of protein a day, which I don't think is enough to maximize the anabolic response to training in any way. Um, a guy 200 pounds would still be eating less than 100 grams of protein a day. Um, so I think that as a general rule, increasing your protein intake is a good idea, but that doesn't mean that more protein is necessarily better. And in the literature that we have, there seems to come a point where you don't see any extra benefit from increasing protein further. And according to the most recent evidence on this, that point seems to be around 1.62 grams per kilogram of body weight. Um, so that would be just around 0 0.7 grams per pound. Um, now, from my personal coaching experience, this actually does seem to be a bit low. Uh, so for me, that would be somewhere around 120 grams of protein per day. Uh, I don't feel perfectly comfortable recommending an intake quite that low just because there doesn't seem to be any downside to going slightly higher and giving yourself a little bit more of an anabolic buffer, uh, so to speak. Um, so for me, I prefer to go off the results of an earlier 2011 paper, uh, which basically argued for a slightly higher intake, up to two grams per kilogram, um, so just about one gram of protein per pound, uh, which is the figure that I usually go with. It's really easy to remember, and it's really simple to do the calculation. As a 165-pound person, I'd eat 165 grams of protein per day. With that said, Bro Jeff over here is recommending 450 grams of protein per day. It's just insanely high, far outside any of the recommendations you'd see in the literature. Uh, for him, I'd recommend something more like 165 to 200 grams of protein per day. Um, and even though the literature, I think, you know, as a high end, you can go with one gram per pound. 
I am also sympathetic to increasing it even higher than that when it comes to body recomposition, which is an area I feel like the literature hasn't really honed in on yet. Um, so going slightly higher than one gram per pound I think is fine, but I'd never recommend anything as absurdly high as 450 grams really for anyone. Now the other thing Bro Jeff said in there was that there's no limit to the amount of protein you can absorb and use for muscle building purposes. Now the first part of that statement I think is true. You, we can pretty much absorb however much protein we eat. So if we were to eat say 500 grams of protein in one sitting, you would absorb pretty much all of that because absorption just means are the amino acids passing through the intestine and getting into the bloodstream and uh, the limit for that is, is ridiculously high. Uh, but I think the relevant and interesting question is how much of that protein are you going to actually use for muscle building purposes? And I actually answered this question in detail in another video that I'll have linked in the description box below if you'd like to check it out. Um, but in short, depending on what literature you're looking at, there seems to be a cap in terms of the anabolic response to a single meal somewhere between 20 to 40 grams of protein. So if you're just going to slam the body with, I don't know, 100 or 200 grams of protein all at once, that might not do anything extra for anabolism past that 20 to 40 gram mark. There's actually a little bit more nuance to it than that, so I'd recommend checking out the full video if you're interested in more on that. Now there's another thing in here that he said that bothered me a little bit, uh, so I'm gonna play that real quick. And you wanna basically think of your body like an on and off switch. So you're either fully anabolic or fully catabolic, and you wanna stay in that anabolic state as long as possible, including during your training. So if you have a Tupperware, you can put some ground turkey in the Tupperware, that's gonna keep you nice and anabolic throughout your training session. Um, so yeah, the idea of thinking about your body like an on-off switch is probably the worst way you can conceptualize it. I've heard re researchers say it's much more informative and accurate to think of the anabolic response to eating protein as a turn dial. So if you eat a little bit of protein, you can crank the anabolic response up a little bit. If you eat a little more, you crank it up a little bit more. And then there will come a point where the dial just won't crank any further and you don't get more of a response. Um, so that's just a more accurate way to think about it. You're not either fully catabolic or fully anabolic. Usually it's kind of a gray area and, and a blend of those processes. Okay, so his second rule was basically you can eat as many carbs as you want and you won't get fat as long as the carbs are clean. Um, now, I, I would think that most of my viewers at this point would know that that's pretty flagrant bro science. Um, it doesn't really matter where your carbs are coming from. If you're eating in a caloric surplus, you will gain fat. I think the more interesting claim that he made was that you should spike insulin post-workout to maximize the anabolic response to training. Um, and this is an old bodybuilding myth that still seems to be kicking around. And it's not total bro science. There is actually some theoretical basis for it. Um, I think one side of the theory goes that, well, insulin is basically the storage hormone. Um, so if you spike insulin in conjunction with eating protein after training, then it's going to sort of force that protein to be stored into the muscle more. It kind of makes sense on the surface, but it's actually not that simple in reality. And in fact, we have a lot of research now showing us that you don't get an increased anabolic response to protein when you add carbohydrate. So just eating protein on its own without carbs seems to be sufficient to max out the anabolic response. You don't get anything extra from adding carbs. Now, it does seem that insulin has an anti-proteolytic effect. So basically after training, spiking insulin might prevent further muscle protein breakdown. However, the concentration of insulin that you need in the blood to see this effect is actually pretty low. So you could actually get to that level, that level of insulin concentration just by eating a simple pre-workout mixed meal with carbohydrate in it that's going to have sort of a sustained insulin response that'll extend into the post-workout period. Um, and also uh, the insulin response from just eating protein on its own is enough to reach that threshold for the anti-proteolytic effect. Um, so you don't really need to add insulin really, or you don't need to add carbs for really any reason post-workout. Just protein on its own would be fine. Or if you ate carbs pre-workout within a reasonable time frame, insulin should still be high enough post-workout that there's nothing urgent about slamming carbs right after training. Now, the other thing he said here was that you need to 
eat a lot of carbs after training to replenish your glycogen, which you'll deplete uh, from training. Um, glycogen, of course, is stored carbo carbohydrate in the muscle and in your liver, which you use for energy during training. The thing is, is that the type of training we typically do as bodybuilders is actually not all that glycogen depleting to begin with. And even if it was, even let's just say if you did a very high volume grueling training session and let's say you're in a caloric deficit, so you're already a little bit glycogen depleted, there's really no urgency to get that glycogen restored as quickly as possible. Whether you slam that carbohydrate very quickly and get the glycogen restored right away or just kind of eat a normal diet with carbohydrate containing meals, at a 24 hour time frame post training, you're going to have the same amount of glycogen replenishment, whether you slammed it really fast right after training, or if you just kind of ate your normal meals afterward. So the only context in which I think glycogen replenishment matters within bodybuilding circles is if you're training the same muscle group twice in one day. Um, so for example, let's say you train your back first thing in the morning, and then you go back and train biceps in the evening, your bicep glycogen might still be slightly depleted from the back training because of the crossover there. So it'd probably be good, a good idea to slam some carbohydrate as quickly as you can after the back workout so that those stores are replenished for when you hit biceps, you know, in seven or eight hours or so. But if you have a 24 hour period between training sessions, which most, most people do, you don't really need to worry about glycogen replenishment as long as you're having some carbohydrate at some point, you know, following the training session, it doesn't need to be consumed urgently. Another potential exception to this would be if you train fasted, uh, because in that case, you're not going to have that sustained insulin response from the pre-workout meal. And I think that when training fasted post-workout nutrition is a little bit more urgent to begin with because you do want to kind of start that muscle building process, which you won't have from, you know, being in the fed state before training. So uh, those would be the slight exceptions there. But as a general rule, um, I don't think you really need to worry about consuming uh, Coke or anything like that immediately after your session. All right, let's see the third rule from Bro Jeff. Number three, the most important rule of bodybuilding nutrition is that you've got to eat big if you want to get big. For me, I like to stock up on some ice cream and go straight to the Ben and Jerry's over here. All right, so the third rule is basically you've got to eat big to get big. Um, I think this is pretty bad bodybuilding advice, at least for the goals that most people have, uh, because I would say most people want to build lean mass, not just whatever mass. And we know from research that if you overfeed someone by a lot, they don't gain much more muscle mass, but they do gain a lot more fat mass. Um, so if it's just pure mass that you're after, and it doesn't matter if it's coming from fat or muscle, then eating big to get big is pretty good advice. Um, in most other contexts, I would say it's pretty bad advice. And part of the reason for this is that I think it puts the emphasis on the wrong thing, which in this case is the diet. It kind of implies that if you just eat a ton of calories, then your muscle will naturally grow. Uh, but it doesn't really work that way. You just get fatter. What causes the muscle to grow is a progressive training stimulus. So the emphasis should be placed on your training, not necessarily your nutrition. Um, so the best bulking advice I guess I could give is that you need to be progressively getting stronger and progressively improving your workload in the gym over time. And you simply use a moderate caloric surplus and general overall good nutrition to sort of augment that training stimulus. Now, when it comes to people who are like extreme hard gainers, I could see this being kind of a good rule of thumb. Um, so people who are just like genetically very skinny, have very low appetites, um, have a difficult time putting on muscle mass. Um, this might encourage them to actually get into a moderate surplus because for those people, sometimes it's so hard for them to even eat maintenance calories that without, you know, eating some amount of, of very calorically dense foods like junk food, um, it's going to be hard for them to actually grow at all. Uh, but still, even in the case of people who are genetically very thin and don't build muscle easily, this can actually be bad advice because I've seen people who are quite skinny gain weight by dirty bulking, um, but not actually build that much muscle. So they still have a very skinny appearance, but now they went from being lean and skinny to being skinny fat, uh, which isn't the ideal scenario. Um, so I think that the, the key really here is to focus on your training, put yourself in a moderate caloric surplus, and that's going to be the best way to build 
muscle efficient, efficiently in the sense that you're going to build more lean tissue and less fat tissue. Now, I talked about this in detail in my bear mode video, and people will sometimes think that I'm being a little bit hypocritical because I've endorsed bear mode in the past, uh, but bear mode is kind of different than just dirty bulking. Bear mode is where you're going for a specific look, accepting a certain amount of fat gain because you just want to look heftier and bigger. Um, and even in that case, you tend to cut off the body fat gain around 15 to 20% body fat. Um, so that's a specific look. And even in that case, I wouldn't say eat to eat big to get big is necessary. It's more of a psychological approach to, to gaining weight. Also in that video, I discussed some research from Garth and colleagues, um, which basically showed that when you feed people a small surplus or a big surplus um, and have them weight train, they gain about the exact same amount of muscle, but the big surplus group gain much more fat. Um, so that seems to be like kind of a strike against this idea. Now, since I published that video, there was actually another study that came out. It was covered in the Mass Research Review a couple issues ago, uh, which found the same basic result, uh, overfeeding subjects heavily, uh, having them kind of dirty bulk, resulted in a bit more muscle gain, but it resulted in much more fat gain. Um, so that's something you want to be aware of. And this led Eric Helms in his write-up to conclude that this leaves us with a relatively bleak view of bulking, at least in natural lifters. A moderate surplus is all that's required, and it appears a surplus of any substantial size is largely allocated toward fat gain, indicating the tortoise beats the hare in most cases. With that said, if you're a novice who is lean or someone who only cares about absolute strength gain with no regard toward body recomposition or relative strength, feel free to order a large pizza right now. Um, so yeah, in terms of practical recommendations for this, I would say to put yourself in a moderate caloric surplus, focus on progressively getting stronger in the gym, and aim to gain somewhere in the ballpark of 0.5 to 1.5% of your body weight per month. Um, so let's just say you're 150 pounds. That would be about one to two pounds of body weight gained per month. Um, so over a year, that might be something like 10 to 20 pounds gained over the year. Now, obviously, as you get more advanced, it's going to be a lot harder for you to build muscle mass. So you might want to scale those numbers down a little bit, especially if you want to stay leaner. Um, for someone who's totally new to the gym, you might actually be able to build muscle a little bit more quickly. So you might want to scale the numbers up a bit. Um, but as a general ballpark, that's a pretty good estimate range of where you want to be. Uh, those were, I think, his, his major pitfalls in the video. Um, let me know if you guys want to see me do more kind of parody videos and then response videos like this. Uh, I think it is actually kind of a, a neat way for me to, to educate a point. And I had a lot of people say that they wanted a genuine grocery haul, like not a troll one. Uh, so that's definitely something I can do uh, here on the channel as well, if that's something you'd like to see. Uh, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Shout out to Bro Jeff and his Instagram. I'll put the, the handle over here if you'd like to check it out. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next video.